Would you get your Bible? Get your Bibles and turn to the very familiar scripture, Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. Will you have it? Say amen. And I want you to know his motive. All right. 
Now, you know, I didn't give you this subject, this title for you to be to get a shake in your boots and say, oh, the devil is coming, the devil is coming, the devil is coming. Because it's not like that. We already learned two Sundays ago that we already had the victory. But what I've also learned is that if you don't prepare for a battle, you won't win the battle. That's right. I'm going to say that again. If you don't prepare for the battle, you won't win the battle. And unfortunately, we have too many Christians who are not preparing for the battle. And when the enemy comes, they fall. Yes. There's nothing wrong with falling because you have the ability to get back up. But after a while, God's not looking for you to fall. He's looking for you to stand. Right. And so we need to know that the enemy is coming, and when he comes, we need to be prepared for why he's coming. Now, the big picture of this is that inside of you, God got something he wants to birth. Right. Yes. And the enemy is coming to abort the birth. Well, That's what you need to know. That's what you need to know. Inside of every believer, if you are a born-again believer, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, inside of you, before the foundation of the world, God had a plan that he wants to birth out of you. And the enemy is trying to abort the birth. Well, that if I take you to a normal pregnancy, the doctor doesn't want the mother to go through too much stress. Because too much stress can have an ill effect on the unborn child. And if there's a whole lot of stress, that the body would naturally abort the baby. Well, you don't got to do abortion quit it. God has already quit the body. That if it goes to a woman's body, if it goes through too much stress, it will naturally abort the baby. Spiritually, it's the same way. Well, come on. Spiritually, it's the same way. The enemy is trying to put so much stress and pressure on us that we will abort what God has planted on the inside of us. That's why we need to know that the enemy is coming. Because when I know he's coming, I'm preparing for he coming. So I want to abort what God has put inside of me. When a woman gets pregnant, she begins to get away from certain things. She begins to stress her out. She begins to change her diet. She doesn't do certain things. But she knows she got something on the inside. I wish I had more believers that do they have something on the inside. And who protect that something on the inside. But the mother protects the child. And if we have more believers like that, In the body of Christ. Well, That's why we need to know that he's coming. Because he's coming to abort what God has planted in you. Now don't get a big head. He ain't coming necessarily after you. Right. All right. It ain't about you. All right. It's about what God has inside of you and what he wants to do through you. Well, come on, sir. And when I know that the enemy is coming, I prepare for him mentally, physically. And spiritually. All right. May I propose to us, some of us ain't preparing for him. That's right. How I know you ain't preparing for him. Last time you went too stretch, you start cussing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. You ain't prepared for him. Last time you got in trouble, you went off. You ain't prepared for him. See, I want you to prepare for him, and I want you to recognize when he's coming. Because when you recognize when he's coming, you don't go off. When you recognize when you're coming, you don't get upset with people. You look through them and say, okay, that's the enemy. And it really ain't about the person who's trying to get me upset. It's about what's trying to happen now. What is it God is trying to use me in that he wants to use somebody else to get me upset? And I look through the person and I say, okay, it's the devil trying to come against me. And when I recognize it, I don't take it out on the person. That's right. Oh, oh Jesus. Yes, yes. Us. There's something that church doesn't teach us. There are some battles 
we will lose. Yes. Right. Yes. There are some battles I believe we are designed to lose. Well, we're not designed to lose the war, but there are some battles that we are designed to lose. Why? Because we don't learn till we lose. Well, come on, oh, sir. Jesus. Yeah. There's some battles that, yes, you're going to lose, and God's going to let you lose them because you won't learn your lesson until you lose the battle. You won't learn that you need God until you lose the battle. You won't learn that it's not all about you until you lose the battle. You don't get broken until you lose well, the battle. And everybody want to give us a blessing plan. Do this and be blessed. Do that and be blessed. And I believe in being blessed. But I also know there are some battles that I'm going to lose. I'm not going to feel good about losing them. But God is going to take those battles, as he said in the scripture, and turn it around for my good. He's going to show me where I am. Because some of us have graded ourselves too high. Well, come on, sir. Yes, that's right. Some of us have graded ourselves too high. We have given ourselves a B plus, and we should have given ourselves a D minus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. We, we have created ourselves too high. And God said, only a test is going to show you where you're really at. Ah, uh, can I go back to school for a minute? Can I go back to school for a minute? We think we know the stuff until we take the test. And then we, oh, I ace that test. And the teacher give you a paperback and you got a D. And you know what they tell you? Go study some more. And you know what God is trying to tell us? Go study some more. Spend more time in my world. Spend more time. Get off your ego trip. Drop the attitude just because it's not your way. Keep more than me. I pour yourself under the mighty head of God that he may have fuck you in two seasons. There are some battles. There are some battles that I am going to lose because if I don't lose the battle, I'll never recognize where I am. Yes. I'll never recognize where I am. That's why I love the scripture so much in the book of Proverbs. A righteous man falls seven times. That means he lost sometimes, y'all. Yes. He lost some battles. Yes. But just because I lose a battle doesn't mean I'm not saved. Just because I lose a battle doesn't mean I don't have a relationship with God. Because I lost the battle, it makes me refocus and say, okay, God, man, you got to get a little tighter. Because I thought we were a little tighter than I was. to look at that negative, but look at it positive and say, okay, God, I'm going to look at this thing and figure out why is it I lost this battle, and then I'm going to improve in the areas that I'm weak in, but when this test comes again, I'll pass it this time. Yes! Oh, and I won't fail that. The devil is coming. Yes. Oh, so we need to get ready for him, and we need to recognize when he comes so we'll stop cussing out people. Yes! Ain't nothing like church cussing out. You know, church don't use those four letter words. We get all deep when we church get through church people get through cussing you out. You, you know, you feel as bad as a seller cussing you out, but we we still try to be holy about. We use no cuss words, but we can just you know you just belittle somebody all the way down to the floor. Yes. What did I do? You know what you did. Well, well, sticks and stones made with my bones, but words would never hurt me. They ain't talking about that in church. <laughs> Ain't talking about that. That's just in the playground. That's just in the playground. But in church, words will hurt you. And you want to be honest about it, everywhere else too. But I'm in the church today. Words will hurt you. But the first thing, you don't think you're going to get like that in church. That's right. Teach I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Why do you think you won't going to get it and you in church? You here, and you know how you act. Oh, boy. Can't get no amens in here. Can't get no amens in here. I'm glad birthday celebrates the next Sunday. I'm glad the next Sunday. I'm glad. You were here, and you know how you are. Yes. And you reap what you sow. Yes. Help us. So why would you not expect it here? The devil. Because he hasn't changed his pattern. He's used different methods 
but he doesn't change his pattern. He is a consistent method of operation. The pastor, the pastor, was totally a method of operation. Can I show it to you in the Word? Yes. Can I show it to you in the Word? Go with me to the Gospel according to St. John. Yes. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10. I will show you the devil's method of operation. A while back, I dealt with God's method of operation. I preached on that subject. Right now, I want to show you the devil's method of operation. So when you see it, you recognize it. The gospel going to say, John chapter 10, verse 10. Let me know where you have it. I want everybody to have it. I want you to see it. You have it? Listen to what it says. The thief, which is the devil, coming now, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Stop right there. That's his method of operation. He may try to do it in different ways, but if it's coming to kill you, to steal something from you, or to destroy you, you know it's the devil. Yes. Can I bring it home a little bit? You were all there in the fashion show, having a good time, and somebody came to try to steal your joy. You shouldn't have looked at the person. You should know it's the devil. Yes. Uh, because they're coming to steal something, so I know it's the devil. If they're coming to kill my joy, I know it's the devil. If they're coming to destroy something in my life, I know it's the devil. So why am I looking at the person? I have just identified the devil's method of operation, and I should come against him and not the person. Uh, he's trying to use. Uh, or the thing he's trying to use. Me and Elder driving the bus last Sunday, coming to the family and friends day. We're going to pack up the bus and take it to the park. Get to the church. He turns the key off and the radiator goes. My God. The radiator goes. That's the enemy trying to steal my joy. Yes. That's the enemy trying to steal my joy. I'm glad I got at least five percent tires. We go get the bus fixed. Amen. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I had to, I had to, I had to lose my joy there because I had at least five percent to have my back. So I could go get the bus. I should just go to it and get it fixed because we got some five percent. Sometimes you go there, you can't do nothing about it. I might as well still pray. 
praise God. I can't Amen. change it right now. Yes. Ain't nothing gonna be any different. Am I gonna be in a, a, a as, as little wise as you say, a funk? <laughs> or am I gonna lift up the name of God and let him take that burden off of my shoulder? That's right. And let him set me free and deliver me. I can be burdened down or I can be happy. Which one do I wanna be? I choose to not let the enemy steal my joy. May I propose to you, it is a choice. Yes. It is a choice. Church has made us believe that the attacks of the enemy, we can't do nothing about it. I can't do nothing about him coming, but I can do something about what he's trying to do against me, affecting me. It's a choice. If I get mad, it's my choice. No, the devil didn't make you do it. You decided to get mad. Yes. Yes. And you used those four letter words. You said you ain't giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil didn't make you do it. You chose to. But the good thing about a choice is that you can repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. And he can reestablish you. Yes. Set yes. you back. Serve that gives us strategy on how to 
defeat the enemy, but we first must recognize the devil is coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I know he's coming, so I need to get ready. I recognize him when I see him. I know his method of operation. Yes. His motive, his ultimate motive is to build his kingdom and tear down God's kingdom. So whatever you're doing to build the kingdom, the enemy is coming to try to tear it down. Because he doesn't want his kingdom to be affected. And this is what we need to realize. When we serve God with our whole hearts, mm -hmm. we are affecting the kingdom of the devil. You see how that's Full 
strength. That's right. Can I show it to you in the Bible? I got that. Can I show it to you in the Bible? He didn't attack Jesus when he was at full strength. He went here fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible said he was hungry. Not only was he hungry, he was weak. Yes. And the enemy came and attacked Jesus at his weakest time. Can I tell you the same thing? He's coming to try to attack you at your weakest time. But the Bible tells me when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Yes. And the enemy doesn't know that when you take me at my weakest time, if I'm living in God, that's the time God. The enemy is not looking for a full strength saint to come at them. Demons are not looking for a full strength saint to come at them. He's looking for somebody who has fallen and that is weak. So he can try to make you fall some more. But when I recognize he's coming, even though I may be weak, when I recognize he's coming, I see him at a distance and I gather my strength together. Yes. So I may not be at full strength, but with God on my side, I can fight you in half strength. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I can fight you in half strength. Yeah. But when you're not expected in the car, yes. Yes. he takes you by surprise. And then you're kicking yourself. Mm -hmm. We all have done it. You're kicking yourself. I believe I did that. I believe I feel for that. Why did I lose my cool? Why did I do that? Yes. 
confirm to him that God knew his sin with best yes, yes. He went in the temple. Yes. Now the first significant thing about that, he wasn't supposed to be able to go in the temple. Because mm. he wasn't a priest. Right. But he said, I've got time to do with all y'all. If God gonna kill me, he might as well just kill me because I'm going in the temple. Mm. And I'm gonna ask him in the temple yes. for forgiveness. And when they didn't come out dead, they knew God had forgiven them. That's the only reason they didn't stone them. That's right. You gotta recognize, as soon as you fall, you can be laying on the ground and still call on the name of God. To come, recognize that the devil is coming. But use it to your advantage. Be ready for it. Yes. Know his method of operation. Yes. Recognize him when he's comes. And then get happy that he's coming after you. Because that means you're on the right track mm -hmm. and the right path. Oh. This is what I'm going to close on as you rest to your feet. This is what I'm going to close on rest to your feet. I may not be where I want to be. But thank God Hallelujah. I'm not where Hallelujah. I used to be. Amen. Increase. 